Starting a new file in Illustrator can be a boring and repetitive process of changing all the default settings you'll never use, like drawing shapes with a white fill and black stroke, or typing using Myriad. It's so automatic to just open Illustrator, create a new file, and then just change these settings as you use them. Lucky for us, though, it is really, really simple to set up a template for a new file, and that's what we're going to do just now. With Illustrator opened up, create a new file. We're already starting the template creation here by setting up the basic settings for our file. I'm going to make a template to create assets and thumbnails for the videos of the channel. So I'll set the file size to 1920 by 1080 pixels, only one artboard, no bleed and RGB as the color mode, since this isn't a file for printing. Raster effects resolution will be 72 dpi and preview mode will be left at default. Now, after setting the basic configuration of our file, we can start working on our workspace. The first thing I'll do is remove everything that I don't use and then open up all the panels that I do use. For this, I like to use the Essentials Classic workspace as a starting point. The Comments panel will be gone as well as the Brushes panel. I have no use for them in my regular workflow. Remember, this is specific to my workflow. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. Take this as a general guide on how to set up your new file template. After closing the unwanted panels, I'll remove some of the tools from the toolbar. In fact, I rarely use the toolbar since I'm very familiar with the shortcuts, but when I do use it, I rather only have tools that I'm actually using. To edit the toolbar, simply click on the three dots on the bottom. I'll just speed up the removal process because I removed quite a bit of tools and I don't want to bore you listing all of them. Just bear in mind that Illustrator has 87 tools and it's highly unlikely that you will use more than a couple dozen in any project. Don't be afraid to remove the ones you find useless because honestly, there are quite a lot of them and you can always restore them by dragging them back to the toolbar. Also, I made a video explaining each and every one of the 87 tools, so if you're unsure about what is the use of the slice tool, or the shaper tool, or the 8 different symbol stuff tools, maybe check it out. It is in the card on the top right corner. After finishing removing the things I don't need, I'll open some panels in the window menu. First, I'll open the Align panel, which will automatically open the Transform and the Pathfinder as well. These are definitely a must in most workflows because they are just very basic stuff. I will also open the Character panel, which brings together the Paragraph and the Open Type panels. I'm a great defender of using the Magic Wand tool, so its panel will be opened as well. After opening all the panels I want, I like to organize them in groups and in an order that makes sense. I try to place the ones I use the most on top, so for example, I always start with the color related stuff, like the color, color guide and swatches panels. The layers panel is always close to the top because it is a very large panel, so it makes sense to leave some space for it to expand. Things like the magic wand and the appearance panel are very rarely opened in my workflow, so I leave them at the very bottom. Bonus tip, many panels might not display their full set of options, like the stroke panel and the character panel. So if you're lacking something that should be there, just click on the sandwich menu and select the very first item, show options. The only panel that I leave expanded at all times is the properties panel, because it is simply the most important and useful panel in this entire software. I also made a video explaining it, so maybe check it out. All the other panels I just leave collapsed. After finishing the workspace, it is advised to save it as a workspace template on the top right corner of Illustrator. Just click on this button and select New Workspace. Give it a name and you're good to go. If for some reason you mess things up, you can always reload your workspace by choosing it on that menu. The next step is to go around your workspace and choose default things for everything that you usually have to change. For example, I use the magic wand quite often to select similar objects, but by default it has a tolerance of 32, which is nothing practical since it selects a lot of unwanted stuff. So I'm setting it to zero, which is what I typically use. If you often work on content for the same brand, you'll also want to set defaults for typography and colors. I like to delete everything in the swatches panel and just add the default colors I need. 
In my case, I'll use this file to make assets for my videos and also to create thumbnails. In my thumbnails, I usually mimic the colors of the Illustrator UI and logo, so you can easily spot that they are videos about Illustrator. So those are the colors that I will set up in my swatches panel, alongside the yellow color of the channel's brand. I usually work with three different fonts, both for assets and thumbnails, so I like to keep a sample of each font just outside of the artboard. This way I can easily choose the font I desire by using the eyedropper tool. I will also set a default font selected, this way when I pick the type tool it won't be myriad selected. Lastly, I like to keep some assets always present in my template file, one of them being my logo and Illustrator's logo. For this, I like to use the symbols panel. I simply delete the default symbols there and add the assets that I want. This way I can quickly drag and drop them to my artwork with little to no effort. Occasionally, I also use some elements of the Illustrator UI on my videos and thumbnails, so I have all the icons for the Illustrator tools placed outside of the artboard, where I can easily grab the ones I wish to use. After you have edited and customized everything you want, we need to save this as a template file in the Templates folder. Go to the File menu and click on New from Template. The default folder for templates will be open. Copy the location of the folder and close this window. Now, back to the file menu, click on save as template and then paste the copied location and press enter. Name your template and hit save. And now you're done! Whenever you open up Illustrator, just go to the file menu, choose the new from template option and select your saved template. Alternatively, you can also use the shortcut, which is Ctrl or Command Shift N. Once again, remember that these are very general guidelines and you can customize absolutely everything you want and even make multiple templates for different uses. That being said, is there anything else that you would customize on your templates? Let me know in the comment section. As for this video, it has reached its end. I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye!